Combining these figures paints a bleak picture. Apart from 2015, cash has consistently left the potteries, with the pace accelerating during the championship years. Over the span of a decade, £2 million pounds has exited the Bet365 stadium. I'm gutted for everybody at the football club, the supporters, everybody, because it's a, it's a brilliant club. Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. Today, we set off for Staffordshire to uncover the financial story of Stoke City. Rewind to 2013, and the Potters stood tall as an established Premier League team, boasting multiple top half finishes. The journey took a downward turn as Stoke's decade long Premier League tenure came to a close in 2018. Since then, Stoke has grappled with consistent bottom half finishes in the championship, struggling to reclaim their spot amongst the elite. Meanwhile, the Bet365 Stadium has witnessed just seven permanent managers over the past decade, though the pace of change accelerated post relegation. Pulis, Hughes, Lambert, Rowett, Jones, O'Neill, Neil. Now let's shift our focus off the pitch. What's been happening behind the scenes? The decade began with lucrative Premier League revenues, but post-relegation, Stoke relied heavily on parachute payments as they adjusted to life in the second tier. A new financial reality emerged in 2022, with revenues plummeting from a peak of 136 million in 2017 to a mere 31 million in 2023. What factors contributed to this downturn? Let's analyse Stoke City's revenue sources. Let's start with matchday revenues. These reached a max of 8 million in 2016, but by 2023, these had dwindled to just 5 million. Interestingly, gate receipts have gained importance, constituting 18% of revenue in the absence of Premier League TV money. But how do underlying attendance figures affect this trend? Whilst attendances flourished during the Premier League stint, the decline post relegation is evident. From a high of 29,000 in 2018, attendance plummeted to under 21,000 by 2023. Next up, sponsorship and advertising. Despite a setback post-relegation, Stoke has successfully regained ground, securing 11 million, comparable to Premier League levels. Now let's delve into television and media revenues. Unsurprisingly, this is where relegation takes its toll. TV revenue topped at over 100 million pounds in 2017, but after the cushion of parachute payments, it has now shrunk to 9 million. By league position, the difference in revenue between the Premier League and Championship years is stark. On average, championship revenues have hovered around 45 million, a mere 40% of Stoke's Premier League earnings. With the parachute firmly in the wind, this average is likely to decrease even further. It's all about results. If you win games, people are happy. If you lose games, then people are not happy. And you have to accept that as a manager. Now let's shift our focus to profits. Whilst the Premier League year saw modest profits, relegation brought significant losses. In the championship, profits fluctuated drastically, plummeting to 89 million in 2020, before skyrocketing to 102 million in 2022. This represents a staggering 190 million swing in profitability. Taking those outliers into account, Stoke averaged losses in both the Championship and the Premier League. So what's the story behind these numbers? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Tackle this with our PL walkthrough. Let's set the timer, grey up that revenue, and dive into staff costs. While wages rose during that Premier League stint, they remained within Stoke's additional revenues. After relegation, there was a significant drop, over 65 million, but it couldn't offset the shrinking championship revenues. In 2023, staff costs dipped below 100% of revenues for the first time since 2019. What was the return on these staff investments for the Potters? During their successful top half finishes, Stoke gained points at 1.2 million in staff costs. However, in the relegation year, this surged to just under 3 million. In the championship, the cost of a point in terms of staff expenses has averaged 800,000. However, even accounting for just staff costs, the repercussions of relegation are clear. Next, let's delve into operating costs. These increased to 26 million in the top flight, but decrease upon relegation. However, in 2022, Stoke recorded 104 million in income. What's the story behind this? Stoke's owners Bet365 forgave 120 million pounds in previously provided loans to reflect the club's financial situation in its fourth year in the EFL Championship. Setting aside that outlier, EBITDA clearly favours Premier League football. 
Moving on to stadium and facilities, it's typically of lesser significance, yet we observe a substantial £31 million income in 2021. Once again, the owners are involved as Bet365 purchased the stadium from Stoke City for £70 million. Another exceptional measure to bolster Stoke City's cash flows and profitability. Lastly, transfer fees. Transfer expenses remain consistent in the Premier League, peaking at £34 million. However, the picture changes drastically with a staggering £70 million expense in 2020 before transitioning to income from 2022. Amidst the pandemic, the club wrote off £43 million in previously incurred transfer costs. The assessment of the playing squad's value dropped from 64 to 21 million, resulting in a substantial blow to the PL. The profits in 2023 were generated from the sales of Harry Souter and Joseph Bursal. So there's a lot happening on the cost front for the Potters, but what if we remove the owner's actions of writing off loans and buying the stadium? The situation looks grim in the Championship. Including those significant one time events, margins have dropped from a 3% operating loss in the Prem to 10%. Exclude those owner one-offs, that plunges to 79%. What's your assessment of that one today? Yeah, that's just really disappointed. Um... Does the cash paint a similar picture? As always, we're examining the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, follows a consistent pattern. There's a notable contrast between cash inflows during Premier League seasons and outflows during Championship years. Over the decade, a net total of 38 million has departed from Stoke City's coffers. Now, turning our attention back to transfer fees, there are outflows in all years except 2023, with Stoke gradually decreasing expenditure as they adjust to the second tier. Over the decade, £167 million was spent on players. Combining these figures paints a bleak picture. Apart from 2015, cash has consistently left the potteries, with the pace accelerating during the championship years. Over the span of a decade, £206 million pounds has exited the Bet365 stadium. I've got it for everybody at the football club, the supporters, everybody, because it's a, it's a brilliant club. So have Bet365 footed the bill? Additional cash injections weren't necessary until 2017, but afterward funding surged. By 2023, the club had received a total of £168 million. Of particular interest, no additional cash has been received since 2021. Could this indicate a shift in strategy from the owners? One thing we are fortunate with Bet365 is to see the owner's financials. This may raise concern for Stoke City fans. Examining Bet365's overall operating profit, there's been a decline from a significant peak of £758 million in 2019 to the company reporting a loss in 2020-23. Could this impact the financial future of the Potters? We just have to wait and see.